money talks. And there's a lot of people out there that are listening to what money says. But you look at Solomon, King Solomon. God didn't give Solomon wealth and honor, fame, because he had money. God gave those things to Solomon because he didn't ask for those things. Solomon asked God for wisdom. And the wisdom that uh, Solomon asked God for was wisdom to lead and to guide his people. A kingdom of people. A lot of people. In other words, Solomon did not feel adequate to govern the people. So, it wasn't that Solomon was looking for the things that God gave him. And eventually, those things got Solomon in trouble. Because Solomon began to get his eyes on the things, the wealth. You know, got so big that he thought that he didn't need God anymore. What we're seeing today is people seem to think that anybody that's successful, that has fame, fortune, that they must have the secret. They must possess the secret to success because they are, because they achieved it. They arrived. So if I could just get close to that person, if I can listen to that person, I mean, to the degree that our I mean, you, you, you see it all the time in media, in, in Fox News, CNN, whatever, where they're asking advice from Hollywood stars. I mean, what's a Hollywood star know anything about the government? How to run the government, how to, you know. But that's what we're doing today. We're choosing, well, they, well I'm not, but, you know, Donald Trump. <laughs> He's not qualified to be the president of the United States, not in any not even but the only reason they think he's qualified is because of his his success with money. That's the only thing he's got going for him. Nothing else. Money. And the scripture says the root to all evil is the love of money. So these people think Donald Trump has arrived. He's a billionaire. He can do that for me. He can lead America to wealth. Well, I don't think that Donald Trump ever prayed and asked God for wisdom like Solomon. I don't believe that the uh, Illuminati and those that are trying to follow Solomon in his rebellion to God, the esoteric teachings. I don't think that they ever asked God for wisdom to govern the people. I remember shortly after I got saved, I remember being inspired by the prayer of Solomon. And so, very early on, I asked the Lord for that wisdom. I asked Him for the wisdom to guide and to govern His people, to help His people. And several years later, it was, I don't know, maybe ten years later, the Lord came to me. And He reminded me of the prayer that I prayed when I was first got saved which had been 10 years previous. 
somewhere around that. And the Lord came to me and he, and he said, and when he reminded me of what I prayed, and he spoke to me and he said, you're going to be extremely wealthy. And at the time, I, you know, I, I was a little bit taken by that and I, I was taken back and, I, and I'm thinking, am I hearing from, is this really God saying this to me? And I started, I mean, because when God speaks, it's the Holy Spirit, you know, witnesses to that. I feel the Holy Spirit come upon me when, he, when God spoke to me and I started weeping. I mean, I started bawling like a baby. God Almighty just spoke to me. And he told me that I'm going to be extremely wealthy. And the first thing that happens is you feel unworthy. It doesn't puff you up. It humbles you. And several minutes went by. And then the Lord says to me, but the money's not going to be for you. The wealth is not going to be for you. It's like, wow, talk about take the wind out of someone's sails, right? He said, I'm going to make you a distribution center for my kingdom. And he says, I'm going to direct you where to put that wealth where it's mostly needed. I'm going to in other words, I'm going to show you who to give the money to. And I know to this point the Lord has been preparing me for this. Because just like when someone hits the lottery in this world, all their family and friends, you know, if they don't give them any money or whatever, they turn on them. And I know that the church, God's people, when they, when they find out that God has done this, blessed me with all this wealth, and they see me being used by God to bless these ministries and putting the money where God tells me to put it, there's going to be jealousy, there's going to be envy amongst those that may not be someone God put on my heart to give them money. But the Lord revealed to me that the needs are great. I was on a 10-day fast, and the Lord gave me that word. He said, the needs are great, but my grace is sufficient for every need. And he said, "You, I will use you to meet those needs as I direct you. And then he said, be faithful, my son. Um, so, again, I asked God, early on, for the wisdom to help his people. That was the cry of my heart. So people today that have great wealth, without that wisdom, are like Solomon in his backslidden condition. And they, they still believe that it's their job to rebuild the temple. And they're going to start the sacrifices all over again. And uh, eventually the Antichrist will sit in the temple showing himself that he's God. Now this is wealth. This is fame. This is fortune without the wisdom from above. What I've learned over the years is the more filled you are with God's wisdom, the more humble you are, but I know that you don't you're not covetous. God taught me that if he puts money in your hand and you close your hand in around that money, not only can't it flow out of your hand to somebody else, but God can't put anything in your hand if it's closed. And the most terrifying thing for you and I to do, brothers and sisters, is to leave our hand open. Right? So afraid that someone's going to take something out. Even if, if, you know, we're afraid God's going to take it out of our hand. Now, there was a point where Job said, God giveth and God taketh away. Well, Job didn't know 
what was going on. He didn't know there was a devil. He thought God was taking something from him. No, God didn't do that. The devil did. The thief cometh not, not to but the thief cometh not but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Jesus didn't take anything from Job. God was teaching Job there was an enemy. And if he was going to grow up into the fullness of what God would have him to grow up to, he had to learn about God's enemy. So, Job didn't understand that, you know, he thought God gives and God takes away. What I've learned is God always gives. I've never had God take anything away from me. He just keeps adding. He just keeps adding. The only thing I've had the Lord take away from me is either something I was holding too tight or my sin. Thank God He takes our sin away. Amen? But I've never had God ever take anything away from me that was good for me that I wasn't coveting for myself. Now, how many of you out there have asked God for wisdom from above? Ask of God, which giveth liberally and he upbraideth not. If any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God. And how many of you out there always keep your hand open? Do you try to hoard what you have or is your hand open freely the scripture teaches to give and it shall be given to you never in the scripture does it teach us to take and it shall be given to us the bible says god love loves a cheerful giver amen have you ever met someone that's hilarious when they give? Are you a hilarious giver? Or do you give grudgingly? Oh, I shouldn't have given that away. Everything's fine until that person does something we don't like. Oh, I should have never gave that to that person. When the things we have become our security, then God is not first in our life anymore. See, God is supposed to be our security. And He is all we need. So I would encourage you to ask God for wisdom, but I would also encourage you to keep your hand open. God bless you.